Good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you for joining us today. I call the June 3rd, 2021 meeting of the Native American Commission to order. Let's begin with an introduction of commission members. Chelsea, we can start on your side. Hi, I'm Chelsea Snyder. I'm a member of the three affiliated tribes. No shadzi. John Strand, Fargo City Commission. Lenore King, Sisseton Wapitan Oyate. Sonia Donahue, member of the D Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. Rebecca Knudsen, Fargo Board of Education. And Emily? Hi, I'm Emily and I'm a member of White Earth Nation. And Sharon? Hi, Sharon White Bear, I'm from the Rikura Nation. Okay, thank you. And we'll move to item two and approving the agenda in minutes. And can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. And the next item is to approve the minutes of May 6, 2021. I move approval. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. All those in fa favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Okay. And motion carried. And we're going to start here with public comment. Um, those who wish to address the commission must use in si the sign-in sheet. Speakers must state their name and will be limited to two minutes. Comments should not contain profanity or personal attacks. Staff, do we have anyone signed in for public comment? Okay, Heather, Heather Keeler. to start my timer. Okay, Heather Keeler, uh, NDSU. The only thing I wanted to bring attention to, and I sent it to Catlin, I should have maybe sent it to somebody else, but um, I'm teaching a course at NDSU called Indigenous Inclusion. Um, it's two credits for any teachers on the Minnesota or North Dakota side to help fulfill uh, the cultural obligation that we have to relicensing. Uh, so anybody who's a part of education that would want to be interested in signing up, it's a short uh, summer course. Uh, the um, it's open right now. I can send out the link, but the closing date ends on June 9th, and then we start on June 14th, and it ends July 1st. Um, so just sharing the information. It's really important that all of our teachers continue to grow in different aspects, but especially in cultural components, both on the Minnesota and North Dakota side. Any questions? I do have a question. And so is that information shared through the public school system on both sides? It's actually shared through the NDSU Extension Office. I can email the link to you. I did send it out to both Indian Education Programs um, a couple months ago, hoping that they would share it within the school districts. And they may have. I'm just not sure. I'd be happy to receive the link and uh, share it out with our administration. Will do. Yeah, thank you, Heather. Your way. Pila. Can, can I have uh, a question? Excuse me. Question. Madam Chair? I think it's Sharon. This is Sharon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was just asking, hi, Heather. Um, can we put that out on our um, website and Facebook? Yes. That loop? Okay. Thank you. So my question is, is this open to non-teachers and what's the cost? Sure, that's a good question. It's $150 to register. Um, it is open to anybody who would want to be a part of it, but it just comes with education CEUs. So the only fear would be that if people wanted to sign up and use it for like social work or any mental health CEUs, that it's only eligible for education, but anybody can take it. Right on. And then when is the registration deadline? 9th, June 9th. Okay. Also, um, no, it's a little bit late, and I told you this already, but really proud of you, and congratulations. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And then item four, we had a statement of solidarity with the FM Muslim community. And Whitney is not present at this meeting here with the statement, so we can maybe move that to next month. Do we have the statement? 
We do. It's in our packet. Would we be able just to read oh, that? Oh, okay. Yes, I didn't realize that was in there. Okay. Would you like to read it? Um, absolutely. John and I. Um, so this is a statement of solidarity with the FM Muslim community. As a board that was formed in the pursuit of social equity and in keeping true to the cultural values of indigenous people, the members of the Fargo Native American Commission wish to formally attest our solidarity for the Muslim community of Fargo-Moorhead in the wake of the vandalism that took place at the Fargo-Moorhead, excuse me, Moorhead Fargo Islamic Community Center on April 24th, 2021. Additionally, we would like to thank law enforcement who pursued justice swiftly in that matter. Your dedication to addressing the criminal acts against our Muslim community members sent a clear message to those who would feel so bold to act in a similar manner that such acts will not be tolerated in our community. The Fargo Native American Commission wishes to formally extend an offer of support, solidarity, and collaboration with the Muslim community in the FM Metro. In this, we also wish to make it clear to those who share the same ideals as the individual accused of the vandalism of the mosque, that although our ethnic backgrounds, spiritual beliefs, culture, etc., may be different from our Muslim neighbors, they do not stand alone. As the descendants of the original inhabitants of Turtle Island, we welcome the members of the Muslim community to the land of our people and hope to walk hand in hand with them as a united front in the pursuit of social equity. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. And can I get a motion to approve this? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Um, I would also ask that we reach out to the Human Rights Commission and ask that they be present at our next meeting to tell us how we as a commission and the community can get involved in supporting all ethnicities across the board. Okay, okay thanks, Chelsea. And then um, item number five is the bias crime ordinance update. And we have Nancy Morris from the city attorney office will provide an update on the bias crime ordinance efforts and next steps. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me to your meeting today. Um, as you know, the city commission has been considering an anti-bias hate crime ordinance uh, amendments and the city commission did act on Tuesday, June 1st to receive and file the anti-bias hate crime ordinances, criminal mischief hate crime, harassment hate crime, and simple assault hate crime. Um, these three ordinances are uh, additions to the existing ordinances that are class B misdemeanors. Um, a class B misdemeanor is the highest offense that a municipality can impose um, for violations, anything higher than that. Uh, any a class A misdemeanor or any felonies must be presented to the state's attorney's office or federally. So again, it's a class B misdemeanor. It's the same penalty, same crime with an additional element to those that are existing. Um, it's a $1,500 fine or a 30 days in jail. Um, like I said, the new proposed ordinances simply add the same or similar language that was proposed at the state legislation um, it is simply because of the victim's perceived or actual protected characteristic. In other words, the person committing the crime did so, and this is the, the language, in whole or in part because of the victim's actual or perceived race, color, religion, gender, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, or ancestry. So the key terms of that are because of the victim's characteristics. The motive for committing a crime is not generally an element of an offense. Um, it is, if the hate crime is charged, the reason for the commission of the crime is an element and must be proven by the prosecutor beyond a reasonable doubt in order to uh, obtain a conviction. Um, the element is not that the victim is the member of a protected class but rather the reason for committing the underlying um, crime was because the victim is or perceived to be a member of the protected class. Um, so I, I wanna point out that there is no North Dakota hate crime other than we have for public places or exercise of civil rights, which is really more addressed to the opportunity for voting if there is um, discrimination in that regard, which are other um, 
crimes that look to the reason that the perpetrator committed that particular crime. Um, I think that uh, there is the federal hate crime legislation, and when that is uh, appropriate, that information will be relayed to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, with the ordinances, so we have a receive and file and, and the offenses, we receive and file, in two weeks will be the first reading, in two weeks after that will be the second reading and adoption, and then what happens, it has to be published because there are penalties. When it is published, it becomes an effective ordinance. So that's the timing wise, so we're still out about four and a half, five weeks at least. So I'd, ha I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions, anybody? How would an individual identify and report an issue? They should contact the police department. And so I also want to add that with this is coming forward a resolution I've been working with Chief Zobalski that there will be training and reporting requirements. So I think that the chief will be bringing forward more information about the, the um, victim's characteristics and when those crimes are reported. And when will this take into effect? It'll be about five weeks. Now, our timing of our publications, because we don't have the, the um, it has to be published, and of course it has to be then, I think it'll be the Saturday after the second meeting. So about a, about a five week, six week period. Great. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Lenore. It, I assume this is for adults only. Is that correct? Doesn't pertain to juveniles, or how does it link into a juvenile system? Well, juveniles can be charged with um, ordinances of violations, so it would be it's it's to all c those that commit the crime that is proven beyond a reasonable doubt. So, it could go to the juvenile system. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be in municipal court, but some are in municipal court. But again, the highest offense level is a class B misdemeanor in municipal court. Thank you, and I was here Monday evening for uh, the presentation and, and the discussion. Appreciate the work that you and others in our community have done for this uh, very important step. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Um, we can, if not, we can move on to number, or item six in the Indigenous Association Report. And Whitney, you want to introduce yourself? And yeah, I apologize for being tardy. I'm Whitney Fear of the Sioux Tribe. Uh, and I'm the liaison between the Native American Commission and Indigenous Association. Um, so we're currently, <clears throat> only real update from Indigenous Association um, is that we're working on collaborating for an event this summer, later in the summer, a picnic of sorts that um, Anna Johnson is leading the effort on and, <clears throat> and bringing together. So anybody interested in helping with that uh, could reach out um, to any of us and we can get you connected with Anna. Um, and second update is that the individual that we had selected and offered the position of executive director to um, and uh, unfortunately having to decline that offer. So we are um, a few weeks after it was um, offered to that individual. So we're now in the process of reviewing some of the other finalists for that position and planning on um, potentially extending an offer to one of them. We had some really great applications. So that's all I have for an update though. Okay, any questions? on the Indigenous Association. Okay, thank you. We will move on to subcommittee reports. Um, let's see, we can start with the housing report. Hello, this is Sharon. And um, I apologize, I wasn't able to attend a, a meeting we had scheduled for this morning and um, I don't know if um, John or um, anyone else met. So if you have anything, if you met, um, you can report that. Perhaps, um, per we all had problems this morning, Sharon, but maybe you could update them on our last meeting, which we haven't reported to this commission yet. 
because we met after okay. our commission meeting a month ago. Some good, right. good stuff going um, on. Yeah, we um, are trying to, you know, one of our things we'd like to do is have people bring forth someone they feel could um, be part of that, uh, the man that presented to the housing. Um, I forget his name. Anyway. That was Trenton with the Community like Land Trust. Right. So we'd like to get applications to as many people or, you know, bring names forth and we can help get people started to fill out those applications and that kind of thing. And then we also um, wanted to add on to our board two members that do the financial part of the, um, this process um, to help us. So I don't know um, if one of them is I heard on the phone, I think, and then the other one, um, Ramona, is another person, and I don't know if um, she's going to come right now or if she's there at all. Are either of those two people there? Jody DeBrises no. is the other, and she is going to join us at the next meeting. <clears throat> okay. Well, what we're trying to do with that is that they both have um, extensive um, knowledge in how to help with the um, financial part of um, housing or helping people get, get through that process. And so we're really looking forward to them helping us on our association or with the, with the housing. Um, what else, John? Did I miss something? that we had talked about that day. Sonia, do you remember anything else? No, I was just getting in contact with Jody and... Yeah, I, I, I'll reemphasize that uh, right now the opportunity is, is ripe for people in, our, in the Native community, especially to, to get their applications into the Cass Clay Community Land Trust to be considered for uh, candidates for home ownership. They've already uh, uh, got two two owners, uh, two the first two owners of, uh, designated, and they'll be doing uh, up to four or five houses this year and up to 25 per year in the future. So the sooner we get those names in the pool right. of families that want to qualify for homes, let's help them in every way get their application process unfolding, because that will that that uh, pool of candidates will grow immensely. I do want to ask one thing, John. Um, the address of the place that I went to that area and I could not find that office. So if you know the um, I can address of that again. It's at the FM Area Foundation, which is directly west is of Island Park on the toward the toward um, Fifth Avenue, I think, about a block north, a half a block north of there, but so it's the FM Area Foundation on the west side of, of uh, is that Fourth Street? Okay. If you need I did it, find it then. Yeah, and you just go inside but the FM Area Foundation that. and ask for Trenton okay. inside there. Sure, and Please. that was locked when I went there, so then that's why I wasn't sure that was it. So okay, I will try again. That's great news Thank that you. we're going to have candidates to apply for housing. Right. And then if we can ripple that out to rebuilding it together and to Habitat for Humanity and really create some mo movement uh, and show tangible results of home ownership. Mm -hmm. How are we um, going to get the applicants or how will they know? Put the word out. Anybody you know who's a family or uh, has children, it doesn't have to be a, 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 a family of, of, of both parents, but you, if you just you know somebody who qu wants to get into their own home ownership and might have uh, a, a struggle getting through that initial hurdle where they're qualifying for down payments and, and for, for the loans, the, 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 the benefit of a land trust is you don't have to buy the land. So you're sharing in ownership of the property. And, and it, so it's, a, it's at least a $50,000 savings to get into ownership. And then you have guidance and stewardship and education and counseling and mentorship and support to be as effective and successful in ownership as possible. So it's a, just a great program. If anybody needs help connecting with them, let me know. Um, um, I also, like what I was trying to do is grab a few applications so that 
you know, when I'm going around talking to someone or trying to induce them to um, apply, then, you know, I'd have that right there with me. And so that was something I was wanting to do or either to get them right over to that place. So I knew where it was and everything I could, you know, guide them through that part. Uh, sounds like a great program, and hopefully we will get our native people and uh, housing and ownership. Um, thank you guys for working on that. Uh, let's see here. Now we have education. Is Rebecca, do you have anything you'd like to bring up? I don't have any. I don't have anything. Yeah. Now the mic is off. There we go. I don't have anything to add. Anna and I were going to be visiting and uh, did not end up connecting. So uh, I think she, she had a couple of items that she wanted to bring up. I'm not quite sure what they were. Uh, so Chelsea, if there's anything that you have. Well, I know that every year there is a reading program for elementary students with the Indian Education Program of Fargo and West Fargo. Other than that, I have nothing else to bring up. It's the last day of school <coughs> in Fargo Public Schools. An education update. There you go. <laughs> For the regular year. Mm -hmm. Hope all the kids have a good summer. And uh, I just want to thank, I guess when I have the opportunity, thank all of our staff and all of our um, parents and students, just really the whole community for <coughs> sticking it through this year because it's it's been kind of a, a doozy of a year and we've uh, made it to the end of the school year through Fargo schools and I know other communities are um, have finished up school already and there has been a lot of challenges that have come to lots of people in our community. And as one of the largest employers in the city of Fargo and one of the largest school districts in the state, uh, we're responsible for the health and the safety of many, many people. So uh, just really, really wanna thank the community for pulling together and wish everyone a great summer. Thank you, Rebecca. And health and wellness, is there any updates? I, I don't have any updates. I had to unexpected, unexpectedly miss last month's meeting, which is the, what when we were going to um, discuss some stuff at that time. So I will be kind of gathering a meeting though in the next mm -hmm. month here. Okay, thank you. And um, next we'll have announcements that are in your packet. And there is a flyer for the enrollment for the Circle of Nations School for the upcoming year. And if any of you know anybody that might want this opportunity to attend, it's in Wapaton. Um, we have all the information here we can share. Um, probably put that on our website also. And um, and also here's, we now have one vacancy on the Native American Commission. And to apply, go to www.fargo-nd-government-settings and involve. involve so. And does anybody? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Sharon, where is our vacancy at? Who's, did somebody, were we always, did we always have a vacancy? No, Anna resigned due to getting into different opportunities right now, so. So just like that, she resigned. Anna? It's Anna, yeah, so. Oh, okay. Does anybody else have any announcements? Um, I have two. I just want to thank Anna Johnson for her amazing service and dedication to the commission while she was here. And I'd also like to remind everybody that June is Pride Month. As a mother to a beautiful, indigenous, pansexual child, um, and also a member of the Alphabet Mafia, I just want to encourage everybody to show their pride, to embrace that, and to support others in their um, individuality. So happy Pride Month, everyone. Thank you, Chelsea. Anybody else have any announcements? I might, Madam Chair. Uh, the Alphabet Mafia, that's <laughs> funny. Uh, <laughs> just so that you all know, the uh, city has now uh, hired the first D Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. 
So my anticipation is that that, will, that role will intersect quite a lot with the Native American Commission and the Human Relations Commission. So, so be thinking of that administrative new position point person that will help, uh, be, we'll, we'll be working with closely. Last thing is just a, a minor note, but I know <coughs> you all might know people who've been affected and had families who had deaths from COVID. I, I don't know the details, but there is a program out there for people to get FEMA funding for funerals for up to $9,000. So if anybody knows if anybody's had deaths, let's make sure they get connected to the assistance programs that are there for them because they may not or may, may may not know that that exists out there to support them. And to add to that, John, there's a lot of tribes in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota offering financial assistance to tribal members on off the reservation if they've had financial hardship due to a job loss or reduced hours as well for rental assistance and paying utilities. And if I might, Madam Chair, and, and thank you, Whitney, that's really important. With unemployment ending, uh, we may keep our ears close to the pavement for folks that are challenged with rent and making rent, because I believe our planning department and others in the city would be able to connect them with support systems out there. The, there's a lot of new programming or new funding. I don't know, but we, if you know people struggling to make rent, Let's connect them at least to planning department and figure out where to direct them to for help. Any more announcements? Madam Chair, um, and I just wanted, this is Tia Frosseth with staff, and I just wanted to expand on Commissioner Strand's comment. Um, if there any is anybody in need of rental assistance or any kind of assistance, um, they should call 211 first instead of the planning department because they'll have a lot more resources in terms of where to direct them. So that's just first link 211. Thank you, Tia. Okay, um, here will the next item is staff updates. Lieutenant Affield. Do you have any updates? Just a couple of things. Uh, hearing that it's the last day of school in the city of Fargo, I just want to take the opportunity to let everybody know that our community engagement team is continuing with our summer program uh, for students, especially uh, in grade school into the junior high age. Uh, we've been doing this program for the last five years. Uh, students that attend this program are picked by uh, teachers at school and other uh, support staff at their schools. Uh, and they go through a number of uh, number of programs and, and activities that help them uh, just continue uh, where they've ended and start their new school year off uh, ahead of where they might have been as opposed to maybe losing some of the steps they gained throughout uh, the previous year. And so we're continuing that uh, this year and we're partnering with uh, Fargo Public Schools uh, and, and continuing that partnership. Uh, also, we're gonna be having our uh, Fargo Police Department community picnic uh, on uh, June 16th. It's gonna be uh, next to Shields Arena this year. Usually we have it in uh, Island Park. We've decided to uh, change uh, that venue for this year. Uh, it'll be the same uh, booths and, and the same displays that we normally have. Uh, also with our cultural corner that uh, I know we've uh, uh, we've had many different cultures kind of show that we had dance, dancing, drum playing, all kinds of different things uh, in that cultural corner, different foods from time to time. And so uh, our Cultural Liaison Officer, Officer Vince Kempf, is, is working and, and partnering with people again this year to do that. Something that we missed in, in 2020 because of COVID-19. So um, just a couple of things. We're also continuing our cultural uh, swimming survival program uh, that we've had for about the last three years. Uh, that will start up again this summer. So that's what we're working on this summer. Uh, and just I hope to see everybody come out to that picnic. It's, uh, it's kind of a fun event where we get to engage the community and, and, and meet everyone. So that's all I have. Thank you. And yes, we are always we usually have a booth and we'll probably set up to and join the fun. And planning staff, do you have any updates? Yes, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. There are just two things that I wanted to highlight in the staff report that's in your packet. Um, one of the things is under number one for the local COVID-19 response. I wanted to highlight in the second paragraph there that there are, um, as of June 1st, the Fargo Cass Public Health is conducting 
vaccine clinics on every Tuesday from 8 to 6 p.m. While it's a walk-in clinic, they do encourage, you know, setting up appointments, but I just wanted to get that word out there and make sure that everybody knows there are other options for vaccines um, outside of the, the regular hospitals in town. And then um, under item number two for federal housing and urban development programs, I just wanted everybody to know that our 2021 HUD action plan, which covers our community development block grant funds and our home funds is in a public comment period right now. So you can certainly reach out to the planning department, email us, call us, whichever way, stop in now that um, we're fully open and leave any comments you might have. You'll also find within your packet that the notice that went out to the public in the form and that's on our website goes through the uh, budget that we're looking at and proposing for the 2021 year as well as the activities which are primarily still focusing on COVID response. There's a lot of, as all of you know, residual issues going on with evictions and, and rental issues. Um, so our, our focus is on that and on the homeless community. So yeah, I um, just wanted to point that out. If you have any comments, certainly um, reach out to us. Any questions for Tia? Oops. Um, um, I don't have any questions for Tia, but I would ask for one more um, thing from um, the lieutenant. And um, did you say that it's outside of Shields or inside of Shields, Lorena, for the picnic? It, it'll be uh, just to the east of Shields Arena. There's a city park there. I'm, the name's escaping me right now. I can't remember the name of the city park, but it's directly across uh, to the east of Shields Arena. You, you can't miss it. No it will be there. I believe it's. Uh, yes, it's then, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, 6 to 8 p.m. will be uh, the time that we're running that. So. Okay. And then, uh, like Lenore had said, we always usually have a table. So who do we contact to let them know that we would like to be have a you know have a display table there? Officer Vince Kemp will be our contact for that. And um, I can actually have him contact contact you and make sure that, that we are continuing to do that. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Lieutenant Offield. Um, do any members have questions or other items open for discussion? Um, before we adjourn, I'd like to remind everybody that Saturday, June 19th is Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. There will be a Juneteenth Freedom Celebration here. Um, it will be hosted by Faith for Hope, and the event will be from noon to 7 p.m. on Saturday, June 19th at Lindenwood Park. So excited for that, and hope everybody shows up. And Madam Chair, if I might. Um, maybe a Tia or Miranda or our, 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 our administration team could alert Greg in communications to put a press release out that will be accepting uh, applicants for the commission. And then, the, then we'll go through our regular process of vetting them and interviewing. Okay, well thank you. If there's no more questions or other items, we will adjourn.